Neolithic man is often talked of as if he were a very different being to that of the modern man. Throughout the modern era, a well-funded, close-knit, often aristocratic academia has portrayed Neolithic man as an illiterate figure, often leopard-print toga-wearing, club-wielding, bearded nincompoop, a grubby, forceful, filthy beast who had barely managed to master the art of creating fire, let alone complex language or societal behaviors. This paradigm of us emerging for the first time from the last ice age, developing into the complex, advanced civilization we find ourselves in, means that Origins of Man is somewhat of a closed book. For to preserve this influential dominance within modern society, anything which contradicts this long-attested claim is simply thrown out, discarded as an anomaly, and any who pursue such avenues of inquiry a mere conspiracy theorist, this regardless of the evidence we so eagerly put forth in our defense. Countless still existing astonishing anomalies, unexplained, simply baffling feats of ancient engineering, so often covered here on our channel, either merely ignored or claimed as absent an explanation as to how, the work of our well-studied more recent ancestors, people who were simply incapable of completing such mammoth tasks. Many of these ancient ruins, claimed as more recent achievements, we feel, possess sufficient evidence to support far greater ages littering many said sites, clearly built using far more advanced precision technologies and Neolithic sites are of no exception. We believe here on the channel that the size of many of these highly eroded prehistoric stone trilithons, and indeed stones contained within many enormous dolmens, are also left by this ancient group. Dolmens made using similar, if not identical techniques throughout the world, from Scotland to Ireland to Japan, all of similar design and possessing inexplicable features, board entrances, multi-ton megaliths. It is as if this group still possessed the knowledge of how to lift and work such stones, but had lost the technologies used to carve with precision. It is as if they were a surviving remnant of a once more capable or more precisely better equipped civilization. How did this ancient people, academically claimed as never having had any contact, build such similar structures? Or perhaps, more importantly, and the feature which initially attracted us to Neolithic ruins, the size of their stonework, megaliths often incorporated into their structures, forming trilithons or entrance tunnels, with top slabs upon dolmens, sometimes up to 8 feet aloft, weighing well over 100 tons. Our discoveries at Newgrange in Donor in Meath, Ireland, with a slab tunnel entrance, like so many Neolithic granges and barrows, regardless of their immense size, once precisely aligned them with solstices, yet they remain mostly buried and thus most conveniently concealed. Some argue that the most impressive Neolithic dwellings can be found dotting the Japanese landscape. However, we feel the most archaeological interesting of Neolithic sites dot the United Kingdom, France, and some areas of the US, yet particularly Scotland and Ireland sites which have fragments of ancient symbols left within, celestial alignments, and a similar pattern decoration or possibly coded message which crop up over and over, especially one found all over the world, of a strange enigmatic spiral. And although usually found sparsely decorating Neolithic sites, barrows, and internal earthworks, its reoccurrence so regularly must indicate it as once having been significant and important to them in some way. Yet, for some reason, Gavernus is undoubtedly the most spectacular of them all. This little shared ruin displays this symbol significance in their carvings as seemingly fanatically overwhelming. Located in France, to have so many of these patterns clearly arranged in careful and concise manners by a people capable of aligning 100-plus ton rocks with pinpoint accuracy, we feel should be perceived as a very deliberate and important undertaking, perhaps in an attempt to convey a message to a future people, a people far removed from themselves in terms of language, a fact they may have fully understood, 
having, as we believe, experienced global cataclysm within living memory. So encoded messages, yet to be deciphered or even recognized as such, hidden within symbolism rather than writings. Are Gavrinus's spirals mere decoration? If so, why go to such great efforts? Are these spirals an ancient code? Possibly a warning, a message yet to be unraveled. Whoever created Gavrinus, and for whatever purpose, remains a mystery yet to be solved. Gavrinus is a place very much still unexplained, yet very rarely shared academically. As such, it is a place we find highly compelling.